Many members of the Liberal Democrats think so, which is why they're voting on a motion to that effect here later in the week. Gay men have been barred up to now because it was felt they were more likely to carry blood-borne diseases. The government has promised to change the law on this, uh, but for some it's not going far enough and discrimination will remain, as Andrew Cryan reports. Mark Ward was born a severe haemophiliac. If I cut or bang myself, uh, I get internal bleeding uh, and it doesn't stop until I'm injected with uh, the clotting agent. That comes from other people's blood donations, thousands of them. But some that Mark received were infected. As a result of that, by the age of 14, I was already contaminated with thousands of different strains of he various hepatitis viruses, including B and C. But on top of that, I was also given AIDS. They basically said, for the safety of you, for the safety of your home, don't tell anybody. It's a need to know basis. From there on, you didn't trust anyone. You couldn't trust anybody because you just didn't know what would happen. The number of contaminants that I've been given, that I know of, is in double digits. And it's still, grow it's still growing. Uh, only this week I actually got confirmed another three. Since the time when Mark was given HIV and hepatitis, new procedures have been put in place. Now all donations are screened for them and nobody has been infected for years. But according to the professionals, a crucial part of that process is making sure the right people give blood in the first place. Okay, the infection rates in, in the real world, in, in, in the average population we'd say, would be higher than blood donors. But because of the donor selection guidelines that we use, we would expect from the questionnaire that we, that, that we uh, give to people before they donate, that we would uh, be rejecting or deferring donors that might be in higher risk groups. Most controversially, a man who has ever had sex with another man isn't allowed to give blood. Gay men are statistically more likely to carry blood-borne diseases, but for many this rule is just discrimination, as perfectly healthy, monogamous men in long-term gay relationships are treated as if they're living a dangerous and promiscuous lifestyle. Before the election, even the Lib Dem leader Nick Clegg called it completely misplaced. Now, earlier this month, the government announced that they were going to change that rule. And as of November, a man who hadn't had sex with another man for the last 12 months would be able to give blood. But according to campaigners, that's still discriminatory, because it's effectively saying it's fine to be gay as long as you don't do anything homosexual. Which means for some, Nick Clegg's pre-election promise hasn't been delivered. It also means there's some scepticism about this week's policy motion, saying the government is wrong and the gay men should be able to give blood just like anyone else would. If conference votes in favour, it will become official Lib Dem policy. It may help differentiate the Lib Dems from the blue part of the coalition, but what difference will it really make on the ground? It certainly won't be the first time contaminated blood has been discussed at the Lib Dem conference. A couple of years ago, Mark, now a campaigner, spoke at a fringe event. He says he was made promises that weren't delivered. I actually felt I belonged and felt part of this group of people. I joined the Liberal Democrat Party, I, and uh, it, that's something I've never done before. I, but I did. I wanted to be part of the Lib Dems. And then when they've done what they've done, I haven't renewed my membership. I, I'm actually now thinking I, I made a huge, huge mistake in trusting them. Mark Ward, uh, ending that report uh, by Andrew Cryan. One unhappy activist. Where do you stand on this? I'm a long-time campaigner for a change in the blood ban rules. Um, I may even have been at that meeting that he, that he talks about, and even within government are campaigning for it. At the same time, someone very close to me, a haemophiliac, as you also saw in the film clip, uh, clip has been infected with um, a number of the diseases we heard about. So the, the safety of the blood supply has to be paramount. Having said that, what you actually want is a system that's based on personal risk and personal behaviour. Mm. Because quite frankly, a heterosexual man who sleeps around can be more of a danger than a monogamous um, gay man. Therefore, we need to get to that point. When SABTO, the, the independent commission that looked at this for the government, made its recommendations, 
we're not there yet in the ability to say that the blood supply is protected by the sort of examinations we currently give. So I think government, great move, step in the right direction, more work to be done so that in the future it can be totally about personal risk and behaviour and not about some grouping which is discriminatory to those people. So do you think that this kind of, it is a kind of uneasy compromise, it is about saying, you know, as long as you haven't had sex in the last year, uh, it's, as, it's, it's OK. It's, How as, do you enforce it's as far as we could get it to go at this point in time. But, you, you know, you're absolutely right, Tim. Because in the sense, you're asking someone, have you had sex in the last year? You're asking a man, and if he says no, you take mm. his blood. How are you going to prove it? There's all sorts of issues, but you move in a direction, and this is But a also move. where it somehow kind of carries on reinforcing. Well, mm. Ram Paddy, what do you feel? Um, what do you think about this? The, the way to protect the blood supply is to practice safe sex, whether you are gay or whether you are straight. Mm. And as Lynn has said, if you have got a straight man who is promiscuous, who goes round having unprotected sex with multiple partners, they are far more of a risk than a gay man who hasn't even had sex in the last 12 and months. And they wouldn't be asked. So by that same token, you could argue, given the, 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 the change the government is bringing, they should be asked whether they had had or how many partners they had had sex with well, over the last year. Or? Let's draw a parallel here. You know, if you look at the crime statistics, in particular areas of London, particular crimes, the, the, the victims of those crimes say that the, the majority of the people who committed those crimes were young black men. That is, that, that's like saying, well, that means that all young black men are criminals. It's, the same, it's exactly the same parallel here. It's got nothing to do with whether you are gay or whether you are straight. It is about your lifestyle and what your sexual can I just in the time? Are. Can I just in the time yeah. allowed, actually, because I want to ask you about this. Obviously, in your sp uh, big speech yesterday here, um, the commitment to consult on on gay marriage, would you like, what I'd like to say, would you be prepared, would you like to see gay marriage, religious ceremonies, gays allowed to marry in church, religious ceremonies? Well, I, whatever I want, I mean, religious uh, ceremonies are up to religious organisations. I'm very clear on this, the state deals with civil and uh, registry office marriages and the religions decide what they want. I mean, we're in the middle of taking uh, the registration of civil partnerships in religious premises through that's going to become law and that's religious freedom for those who want so ultimately I'm a live and let but live person. But one day, you'll live but one day. Yes, obviously I'm a liberal democrat and I'm a live and let live person um, but at this moment in time what the government is looking at very clearly is civil gay marriage. So is this marriage. something that, we're having, that you're feeling that you're having to drag people slowly through but eventually you want to see gay people with the same rights as uh, people who are not gay in the eyes of the church? That's for the church. You're not prepared to say any more? I've, I've always been quite clear that everyone should be able to do whatever they feel, but clearly the uh, religious organisations in this country feel very strongly in another direction. OK, Lynn Featherston and Brian Paddock, thanks very much.